edition of the video series is on the history of numeration. Since the dawn of time, people clumped trees, animals, and food into groups, categorizing each, noticing the differences, and pondering how to tabulate the quantity. Probably the first type of counting was using fingers to match one finger to one sheep, three fingers to three sheep. Later, these rudimentary numbers were carved into the wall as a way of tallying amounts. This led to tally sticks that were carried about to keep track of numbers. The written form of numbers we have today progressed from tallying to images that can be seen on clay tablets and papyrus. These ancient artifacts displayed in museums around the world present organization, counting, and computing that existed thousands of years ago. Symbols for counting and for mathematical formulas differed greatly around the world because there was very little communication and because standardization was not a necessity. Early civilizations created methods for keeping track of numbers and performing calculations. The earliest symbols, like the Babylonian cuneiform method, was found on clay tablets that date back 5,000 years. Numbers were needed for geometrical calculations, and there's evidence of the use of square roots thousands of years ago. These early roots of the Babylonians base 60 system are embedded in our numbers today, with 60 minutes in an hour and 360 degrees in a circle. Base 60 was chosen because 60 is divisible by so many numbers, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, and so on. A clay tablet dating back to the 24th century BC is housed at the U.S. Library of Congress. The Egyptian numeration system uses the stroke to represent single digits, a heel bone to represent 10, the scroll to represent 100, the lotus flower to represent 1,000, and the pointing finger to represent 10,000, burbo fish to represent 100,000, and the astonished person to represent a million. An example of the Egyptian numeration system is represented in the rind papyrus that is housed in the British Museum. Ancient Egyptian numeration uses base 10 in what we call simple grouping system because we add each of the symbols in each place to determine the number. Thus, five heel bones is 50 or six lotus scrolls is 600. Addition is simple because when you add, you get the sum of the individual symbols. For example, if you add two lotus flowers to three lotus flowers, you get five lotus flowers or 5,000. The ancient Chinese numeration system is a multiplicative grouping system, which means that a multiplier is used to determine how many times a place value is used. While the Egyptian system requires the individual to write eight heel bones to represent 80, the Chinese system requires only two symbols, the eight multiplier and a 10, generally written above and below to represent the same number. Here are the Chinese numbers. Notice that while they may look complicated when you practice them, they're not too difficult to write. The Pythagoreans who followed Pythagoras did not accept the concept of irrational numbers. As it turns out, Pythagoras did not come up with the Pythagorean theorem. There is a tablet called the Plimpton 322 that dates back about 4,000 years to about 1900 BC housed at Columbia University. On this tablet, there are Pythagorean triples 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, 9, 12, 15, that satisfy the equation that is commonly referred to as the Pythagorean Theorem. Obviously, this dates back before Pythagoras was born. The Romans frequently were in battle, and they needed to have hand signals to be able to announce to troops that were far away how many troops that they needed. So they used the, their hands. So they had one, two, three, just like regular Roman numerals, Four, and then here is five. So five is a V. Two fives add up to a 10. So here's a 10. There's an X. So a 10 is an X. 50 is this. So if I want 50 troops, I'd say 50 troops. If I want 100, that's a C. So here's a C. Now, how did you get a C? Well, you took 50 and 50 give you 100. Do you see that? There's a C. Notice the C. 50 and 50 is 100. 500 is a D. And 1,000 is an M. So the Roman numerals are 1, 5, 10, 50, 100, 500, 
and a thousand. Those are your Roman numerals. In Central and South America, the quipu was used to record numbers. The Incas used the quipu to manage financial transactions and do bookkeeping. Today, the quipu serves as a ceremonial image for rituals. The quipu consists of colored strings or cord that's generally knotted in a base 10 positional system. The numbers we use today come from the Hindu Arabic numeration system that dates back to the Hindus of 200 BC. These were transported to Spain from Arab settlers and traders. By the 1600s, Isaac Newton had extended the idea of numbers to infinity and the concept of continuous variables. There is so much to discuss about the history of numbers. The story of zero, pi, phi, and e are particularly interesting, but we will cover these in a future episode. For now, you have a better idea of the origins of numeration and ancient number systems.